Hey there, boys and girls. We're going to be learning today about the ancient Greek alphabet. Now, believe it or not, you actually are familiar with a couple of ancient alphabets already. In second grade, you learned about the Hebrew alphabet, which was written the opposite direction as ours, and the Old Testament was written in Hebrew. That's why we were learning the Ten Commandments in Hebrew. You also learned about the Egyptian alphabet, which was called hieroglyphics and how they used those symbols to first stand for words and eventually they stood for sounds much like our letters do. Now in ancient Greece between about 1600 and 1200 years before the Lord was born they were writing in a language that's called Linear B or Mycenaean Greek and unfortunately we don't actually know how to decode this language. The ancient Egyptian language was decoded with the help of the Rosetta Stone, but we don't have something for this. So the ancient, ancient Greeks used to write like that. However, they soon became exposed to the Phoenicians. Now, the Phoenicians were a trading civilization. They traveled all around the uh, countries in that part of the world, and they had an alphabet that looked like this. Now, if you look really carefully at this copy of the ancient Phoenician alphabet, and especially if you notice the names of the letters, you might notice that some of those letter names sound a little bit familiar, like Aleph, Beth, Gimel, Daleth. So from that we can learn that the ancient Hebrews also learned about how to write things from the Phoenicians. So about 800 years before the Lord was born, the Greeks adapted the Phoenician alphabet. They took a lot of the things about it, changed them a little bit, and made them their own alphabet. They took th ideas like the shapes and names of many of the letters. They took the idea that different letters stood for consonants and vowels. And this language is important enough that it still has an impact on us today. Ancient Greek was the language that the New Testament was written in. So when we read stories about the Lord's birth, his life on earth, even the Easter story, those were all originally written in Greek. So people that are learning to become ministers will often have to learn a little bit of Greek so that they can read it as it was originally written. We also use ancient Greek in other ways like in science. So for example, you might remember that the word amphibian comes from two Greek words. A lot of words that are connected with science use Greek words as their basis. So let's look at the Greek alphabet. This is a chart that shows the uppercase and lowercase of each Greek letter as well as the name in Greek for that particular letter. And there's a few things I want you to notice. First of all, some of their letters look like our letters. That's because the ancient Greek alphabet became the basis for the Roman alphabet, which is the basis for our alphabet. So a lot of the letters look the same. You might notice a couple of other things. Take a look at the first two letters in the Greek alphabet. They are alpha and beta. That's actually where we get the word alphabet from. Alpha, beta, alpha, bet. I also want you to notice the first and the last letters in the Greek alphabet, alpha and omega. Where have we heard these before? We've heard them before in the book of Revelation where the Lord says that he is the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Now he's saying that not just to describe his power, but the reason he describes his power like that is because of what he's talking about. The alpha and omega are the beginning and end of the alphabet, the first and last of the alphabet. Now with any language, it's important to notice that the letters are not a code. The words that we use in English aren't Greek words if we just figure out the sounds and switch them over. It's a whole language with its own rules. Now, if you like to learn about that kind of thing, there's a great website or an app that's called Google Translate. And if you select English and Greek, 
as the languages that you're wanting, you can type a phrase. I'm going to type a phrase from the word, our father who art in heaven. And it will show you what that would look like in Greek. And you can even press the sound button to hear what it would sound like. So if you're actually wanting to translate words and sentences into Greek, you're going to need to use a tool like Google Translate. However, if you want to try to translate things into Greek, a good thing to choose is somebody's name because the way the name is said is pretty much the same from one language to another. So we can use this chart to help us learn how to write names in Greek. I'm going to show you how to try it with the name of an ancient Greek god or goddess, and then you're going to try to do it with another name as part of your activity. It could be your name, it could be the name of a Greek god or goddess. There's lots of neat things you can try with this. So we're going to try decoding into Greek the name Artemis. Now, when you're decoding a name, the important thing is to pay attention to the sounds, not necessarily the letters. If you look at my chart, the first column is lowercase, the second column is uppercase, the third column tells the Greek name, the fourth column tells what sound it makes, and then the fifth column just gives an example. So I want to look at that column first to help me figure it out. Now that works well, the arrow is there, because the first sound in Artemis is that ah sound. So I'm going to write the alpha, which, lucky for me, looks like an uppercase A. Then I'm going to look for the R sound in my column. It's down here. And I'm going to write the lowercase R. Then I need the T sound. It's right here. The tau sound. And again, I'm doing the lowercase R, T, A. Uh. I'm looking for that kind of sound here. I think the closest one is in the I as in pit. So it's R, T, I. Now I'm at the M. There's the Mu. There's that I sound again. And finally the S. So I'm looking for the Artemis. I think it's down there. That Sigma. So if I was decoding the word Artemis and trying to write it in Greek, I use the chart like that to do it. So you get to try to translate a name into Greek with any name you choose. Again, it could be the name of a god or goddess you're interested in. It could be your name. It could be your mom's name, not mom, her name, because the Greeks would have had their own word for mom. Some things to keep in mind, remember you're looking for the sound and not the letter. So for example, the word Apollo has two L's in it, but we don't go Apollo, so you just do one sound. There are some English sounds that don't have an equivalent in Greek. So for example, the word, the letter J is not in Greek. It wasn't in Roman either, so you have to pick a closest one. If it was me, I would pick Zeta as the closest one because the Z sounds as close to the J sound, but you can make your best guess. So have fun, give it a try, write some words in ancient Greek.